what were the Italian Renaissance artists thinking? I'm Michael Siegel, and today we're going to be looking at this incredible drawing by Italian Renaissance artist Pontormo. I'm not going to be copying the drawing, but rather I'm going to be using it to reconstruct and analyze the thought process behind it. And hopefully by the end of this, we'll have a better understanding of what the Italian Renaissance artists were thinking in the creation of drawings such as this one. So we see the head, the tilt of the head. I'm feeling the pull of the neck in this direction. It's not that I'm trying to copy his outline. You can see I've done multiple lines already just through trying to feel it. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm feeling that direction and of course the raised shoulder. But the thing that occurs to me right away is what we're talking about, right? It's like this passing down to this. That's what I'd really like to capture in this. Now that happens to fit neatly in, a, in an angle, but I'll get to that later. Like what I want to get to first is just that, you know, that movement, capturing that movement. And then what happens in this body? Like what's he actually doing? Everything kind of keeps sliding over to this side. Like that, you know, that's another part of it is like the whole pose is moving that way. So I don't want to accidentally just then start putting the hips right under this. Everything is moving this way. And, you know, the center line is doing a lot. The center line is coming all the way from almost profile and then winding its way over this way. And so that's the twist of the pose. Everything is going that way. Okay. So I'm just thinking about those things. I mean, I'm not doing anything about it right now. I'm just thinking about it. Okay, so then we get down to the pelvis. I'm looking where? I'm actually looking to the base of the pelvis here to try to feel this whole form so I can fit legs into it. That's what I would prefer to do. Now the movement of the legs, movement of the legs, this is very foreshortened, so I don't wanna to get too caught up in other kinds of thinking. With foreshortening, you wanna feel around, right? You wanna get around this thing and just feel the relevant places to get around the form. This is foreshortened, but not as much. So again, common pattern over the top here. I'll slide over, get myself some room. Okay, thinking about where that knee is, okay. Thinking of the design principle here. He's very round here and very straight here. Just thinking about that. Okay, the knee is pushing us into the calf. Okay, this side, this leg kind of continues out a little bit. Make sure I capture a little bit of a sense of this. Okay, see if this knee maybe needs to get pushed out more. Just make, making sure that I capture the difference between the leg that's kind of coming at us more and the one that's a little bit more out. Okay, so that they don't look too symmetrical. It's part of the neat thing of the pose is that it's not quite symmetrical. Okay, so we're dealing with that. Then we can sort of start analyzing the, you know, the foreshortening of this arm. I just see the, the shoulder on top and then the biceps almost disappear. They're so uh, foreshortened and then overlapped by the, by the forearm, which is also foreshortened. Okay, and then the, the box of the forearm is coming out of that. But look how foreshortened it is. See, I'm getting too long with it already. I, try, I should slow down. Like notice, for example, that as far out as this thing stretches, the wrist, the wrist is just under the neckline. I mean, it never goes beyond the torso. I was already way out here going to make it a hand over there. Okay. So you have to be careful with those things when you're doing foreshortening, not to go too far in any direction. It's good maybe to, you know, have an idea, you know, where that body is so you can relate the wrist to it and then come back and, uh, you know, describe it like backwards, do the wrist first, connect it into the forearm, connect that back into the shoulder, 
etc. Okay, and then the even the hand is done as a foreshortened form. By the way, if you enjoy this content, I do plan on making many more episodes. Please do not forget to hit like and subscribe. Okay. Like so. Okay, so the general movement, but let's get into a little bit of, you know, what's what lies underneath in terms of the form. And we'll get into his outlines by the end. By the end, we will. But here, what I'm mainly seeing is rib cage here okay just trying to bracket that out and then pelvis out here okay pretty simple like that that doesn't have a lot of you know a lot of tilt to it it's mainly the twist that's the main issue of it is the twist so as we start defining this thing more seriously what do we look for we look for the center line and we look for the pull across the form. So here we go. Okay, um, where to begin? I guess I'll bracket out the important parts of this rib cage as I see them. The rib cage is pulling around here. I'm back here right now. Okay, and then it's coming around the body this way on the other side. So I'm feeling even like a smaller version of rhythm now across the form. The center line, which is all done with the rendering, is pulling this way, then again, pulling. I'm literally taking my lines and pulling this way with them, pulling this way into the ribs. Okay, things are coming around from behind and pulling across into the core. Everything I'm doing now, I could zoom in for you, I suppose. Everything I'm doing now, which maybe you can see here, is pulling this way. Everything, all of my lines are going to try to show the stretch across. So the rendering is not a way to show realism. It's a way to show movement. That's what it's for. I mean, that's what I feel Pontormo doing. Okay, now in places he gets actual compression. Okay, belly button. Okay, but the whole thing is a way to describe twist. That's what we're here for, is to describe twist. Okay, you can feel it here in the armpit, pulling, pulling, pulling. Okay, so what do we have out here? Here we get some interesting like outliney stuff. It's neat when you look at the Pontormo, I get this feeling. I get this feeling that like it fits in, you know what I mean? Like it's a puzzle that fits. I hope, I hope that makes sense what I'm saying. Let me just grab the line. You see all the curvature of the line here? Did he make a shortcut and just copied the outline from the left to the right? Always well, was. in a way, I think he was thinking that way because you can see it fits, right? It's a beautiful pattern. Like it almost locks together. So I think he did, in, in a, but offset, right? You understand, like, it's not symmetrical. It's literally the same thing. It's not that out here, it's not that he has a line out here, so he has a line out here. No, if he has a bulge here, he has a recess here. And if he has this, then he has this. So that emphasizes, like I said, the flow of everything. Flow comes from that. It comes from repeating the sides. Maybe I've talked about that before, like when you do an arm or a leg or something, what you don't want is to just have this line repeated on this side. That doesn't work, right? Then you don't have the flow. What you really want is this. And then later, later in the timeline, that. So that it seems like in this case, yeah, he figured out kind of a really neat way to do that. So that's 
what I'm going to try to imitate with him is uh, see that coming that way. So you see that coming that way. It just, it gives a beautiful sense of continuity and rhythm. Okay, then you start seeing him do all this cool stuff inside. Like we know the oblique is there. We know that this form of the muscle is right here, sitting here. We can see it on him. Okay, but he doesn't just draw it like that. He does the whole thing very subtly with modeling tone coming inside. Like here, if you follow me, he's, he's keeping it inside the form there. And then he's bringing this around and down. Okay, and then you feel him with modeling tone going over the top of it. I'm just going darker than him so that you can see it. Okay, so he's showing you that by working internally. That's another good thing to learn because watch this principle. This is something else to teach you guys. You can have a simple shape like this. That's just, you know, that's a simple shape, but you can create the illusion of topography just by how you handle things on the inside of the shape, okay? The internal things that you do in there can, in a way, hide the original shape altogether. And you might not even realize that this was once just a rectangle, right? You see that, that kind of idea? This looks like a bunch of form all stacked up on top of itself. But really, it's the expression of a rectangle. Um, that's the kind of thing he's doing here. Okay, like he's, he's doing that oblique internally. Okay, so this is out. Now what happens here? The leg fits in. So I feel the leg fitting in. He's emphasizing the gracilis, which is this muscle right in here. He's emphasizing that because that's like a tighter muscle. That's the muscle that when you do the splits, that's the one that keeps you from doing the splits or keeps me from doing it. So that, that muscle, it's uh, right in the pubic arch, creates a stronger corner, and he's more emphatic with that line. So this is just coming in. Here you feel the modeling tone again of the cylinder of the leg just fitting in. He's really using a lot of modeling tone here, like a lot of it. So I'll try to emphasize that in, in just a bit. Okay, so the modeling tone, like when you look at what he's doing here, he's showing you a lot of dimension, but he's doing it all with modeling tone. So if you remember, modeling tone is the idea that the things facing you are light, but the things that are receding from you are dark. So for example, you get the feeling here, let's say that, that things are a little bit lighter on this part of the quad, okay? But as they recede and go back, they, they start getting darker. And then at, you kind of feel this, I'm gonna emphasize it for you. Here, you kind of feel the light again, as though that plane is facing towards you. And then it gets dark on top again, and then light here again, and then dark on top again, and light here again. So what you're feeling there because of that subtle modeling tone that he's doing, it's kind of like, like this, like that's a receding plane, okay? But then it locks into this front facing plane and then that has a receding plane and then that locks into a front facing plane but that has a receding plane and then that locks into a front facing plane which has a receding plane. And so you get all of that like cliff side, um, you know, steps along the side of the cliff by virtue of the modeling tone. And it's extremely um, descriptive. Like, look at how intensely descriptive that is. Now, see if you can find it when I take off my version, because I'm really emphasizing it for you. But like, can you feel that now that that's one form fitting into another and creating all of that great topography? It's not just a bunch of lines and muscles. It's it's really a lot of geometry. 
okay? And I could name each one of these things for you, really, I could. This here is the ilium, okay? That's the actual pelvic bone. This here is the flexor. Um, this here, I mean, I would probably call that like a fat pad on top. And then this is the quad. So it's all stuff. It is all stuff, but he's using the anatomy in such a clever way to, to create dimension and to create structure. Not easy. I mean, it's beyond not easy. It's masterful. Hardly anyone alive has ever been this good at it. So, um, okay, so here, this is also interesting down here and I'll, I'll tackle that a little later, right? I wanna do the big, the big leg. So you remember what we said about the leg that it's really two things, right? It's this, and then it has this crossing under it. So you're seeing the same thing out of Pontormo pattern. We're not surprised. Why would we be surprised? It's pattern. Okay, perfect. So um, yeah, what's happening with this leg then is we get those two different masses. We have the one mass of the adductors. Adductor is the opposite of abductor. Abductor, instead of abducting, taking away, adducting is bringing back home and the home is center. So these are the muscles that pull your leg towards the center. They adduct your leg. Guess what? On the outside of your hip, you have abductors, things that pull your leg away from the center. Okay, so we're feeling that. And then the overlap, this is the quad now overlapping that. So I'm really just trying to develop the topography here that he is, that this has a plane going across then down, and then now the new form of the adductors and down. You're just trying to develop that. I mean, in reality, this is much rounder, and then this is flatter. So there's also that, um, that variation. Okay, form of the knee coming around. Okay, the, the quad is always grabbing onto the knee. That's fine, don't need to overdo this. Okay, I'll do a little bit of that modeling tone here to show that quad now fitting in to the fat pad. Okay, which I already kind of described a little before. And then, yeah, then look at all these things. What the flexor here with its, uh, And that's so easy. And then here, the top of the ilium. Okay, just trying to fit all those things in together. All right, on the other side, we have some neat stuff happening. Try to pull this a little closer. Okay, on the other leg, we have cool stuff. Why? Because the twist, the twist is like making the belly here press against the uh, the pelvis, so I like that. You know, anytime I get to see something like that, I'm pretty happy. So that's pressing in there. So we feel that compression against the pelvis. That's all pulling from around the other side. All this is pulling around, and you get more more feeling of pull around here. Let me ease up on this outline. Okay, because we, it gets a little bit more intense than that. We have the rib, the corner of the rib pulling out and around here. And then from behind that, we have the uh, gluteus medius. And in front of that, we have the flexor sitting down on there. And same thing, we have the leg fitting into all that, etc. modeling tone. Okay, and then on the inside, okay, that's coming around. We finally get down to the baseline here. You can actually see the gluteus muscles underneath. Look, he's sitting on them. There's one and you feel the cleft here and there's the other. And of course, in here now we're looking at the center part. But so you're actually, that pelvis is facing you enough that you're seeing the underplane. You're actually seeing his rear end under there, you see that? 
Okay, now this is foreshortened. This, I'm now looking at this as a cylinder coming this way. That's what explains this flat line here. It's not just a flat line, that it's an expression of this cylinder, okay? So that's why it's flat. It's flat there. And then this is not a bulge. This is not a bulging curve. This is a corner. It's changing from coming towards me to now going across this way. It's a corner. So you have to get used to seeing those things in 3D instead of seeing lines that just change angle. You know, you don't want to sit there just saying, okay, this is a curve. It's not a curve. It's a corner. It's changing direction right there to go under the leg and out the other side. And this is the corner right there. When you see it that way, then you're making useful lines, you know, that mean something. You have to feel that that's a corner. If you feel it, it'll look like a corner. If you don't, it won't. Okay, then from inside that is coming this next piece, okay? That's locking into that. And then locking into this is the knee form. Okay, so that's how you get all that dimension. Does that make sense, you guys? You see it? Yeah. That's a big one. That kind of thing happens on the foot big time, on the heel. I mean, we can talk about that whenever, but. Anyway, you guys are planning on taking anatomy or some of you are, so it's in there. We can talk about that today, you guys, because um, I'm basically ready to let you into that whenever you want. Okay, so that's the quad form on top. And again, I mean, he's really subtle here. I'm just gonna exaggerate a little showing the uh, the form of the adductors there. Okay, so that you can see again, those two separate cylinders. All right, let's see where we are as a whole. There, I'm not sure why I picked up that little sliver of paper there. Okay. Okay, well, I mean, I'll just kind of try to wrap this one up, you know, before the break, but hopefully I'm giving you enough information to help you see things. Okay, so under here now he has the form of the scapula. Okay. And that's in front here because we're getting a side view of that rib cage. So we're actually seeing it in front. That has a front plane to it, which is what that, what this stuff is all about. Okay, so let's see if we can capture this stuff. See, he's being square enough to show you the rotation of the shoulder. He's not just doing it as a ball. He is thinking enough about the rotation to give you that angle right there. And then he kind of, you know, he tried it a couple of times or whatever, but it's pretty clear he's got this angle here. So he's seeing it like that coming towards us. He's using modeling tone again to knock this side back. Like I told you, the biceps basically disappear. You feel them just as a depiction of roundness for a moment. That's where? That's this form. That upper arm form is almost completely blocked by the forearm here. Okay, so you hardly see it. And this is the shoulder behind it all. So it's still three parts. It's just, it's all coming right at you. This is reminiscent of the Venn diagram, right? Shoulder, biceps, forearm. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to see there. I'm trying to see the, you know, that minuscule biceps form as little as we can or whatever, as much as we can get involved in. And then we have the overlapping forearm, 
with its elbow. Okay, and that comes around. And again, this, this is foreshortened. The flat part of it, this boxy part of it here is like coming from inside. You have to imagine it like this, like you have this oval form, but sticking out of it, locking back into it, is this form. It's like it's foreshortened coming from within that oval form. That's what's going on with the forearm. Okay, it's got another hand here and just kind of forgot all about. Okay. Okay. Um, anyway, I think this basically gives us what we're looking for. All right, questions on this one, you guys? <laughs> 